Every year on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we honor the fallen from the First World War and the many wars since, and we think of all those who serve in Canada's defense. We wear poppies as a remembrance of their sacrifice, and this year is the 101st anniversary of the poppy. And speaking of the poppy, this year the Canadian Legion is going green by introducing a biodegradable version of the red flower, previously, I guess, made out of thin plastic. And with COVID more or less behind us, we hope to see many more poppies, parades, and commemorations in honor of our fallen. But is Canada doing justice to our history? Do our children know what Canada sacrificed for their freedom? Are we honoring that sacrifice by safeguarding those hard-fought freedoms? Well, joining me now to share his knowledge on the history of Canada's Great War, Canada's sacrifice, and remembrance in general, is author, filmmaker, and writer John Robson. John, thank you so much for joining me today, and I'm, I'm always grateful to have you on because I feel like you really do demonstrate and, and beautifully illustrate why we as Canadians need to really honour Remembrance Day. So thank you so much. And so maybe I'll start with that very general question. Why is it important that we commemorate Mem Remembrance Day? It seems to me that it's important for a number of reasons. And the first of them is to understand that the way of life that we enjoy uh, it was not something to which we are entitled, that just happened naturally, and that if we simply go about our business thinking, ha, huh, you know, I'm worth it, that, that it'll continue. We are here today because of people who risked and in some cases lost everything rather than give in to bullying and tyranny to people who did answer the call and who knew that there were things more important than life itself. And we live in a society that I think is lacking in a number of uh, important qualities. And one of them, in fact, is gratitude. So I think there's a, a rather broader point here about Remembrance Day as being one in a number of ways that we can remember to be grateful, to understand that we have received more than we were entitled to. And, you know, I appreciate the introduction you gave me, but I do think it's important to point out that I've never worn a uniform, that I am somebody who appreciates what he has been given, but I am not you know, I, I don't belong in the first or even second row here. I am uh, very much a spectator applauding the veterans. And I think it's also interesting that in some sense, it's been brought home because of what's happened in Ukraine. Right. And one of the things about the war in Ukraine is that when it started, it looked as though it was going to be heroic, but futile. And we admired the Ukrainians for taking up arms in the face of certain defeat by the Russian juggernaut. And instead, it appears as though it is this Russian juggernaut that's going down in flames. But I, when you invited me to come on the show, I was reminded of a, sm a small film clip that I did eight or nine years ago while doing the, the Constitutional Trilogy. And it was filmed in Britain. It's one of these obscure kind of hill forts that had been used as a strong place in times of trouble from the Bronze Age on. And I was thinking to myself about the number of small political entities facing danger and devastation, people who had rallied in these very small places in small numbers, um, m forgotten. The history right. has no idea who they were or what they fought for. Uh, and many of them were defeated. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to digress a bit into the Lord of the Rings here, because in Tolkien's backstory, you have the Dunedain of the North and their kingdom, particularly of Arthedain, that fights a losing battle against the witch king of Angmar and so forth. But um, in some sense, it contributes to the larger victory. And we have to remember that so many of the people who took up arms did so in the face of probable or even certain defeat, yes. thinking somehow something would be salvaged, even from a cause that was indeed lost, like the sack of Rome, things of this sort. And also on, on a much smaller scale, I mean, we focus on the world wars in Korea, and rightly so, but we shouldn't forget not only other conflicts like the Napoleonic Wars or the you know defeat of the Spanish Armada, um, the the Saxons who fought against the Normans in 1066. In fact, it was more or less the Saxon uh, form of government that prevailed. But the Battle of Hastings was lost, and uh, it could have been a catastrophe. And again, all these people who fought in much smaller engagements and when things we've forgotten in major wars and. Things we've forgotten in minor wars that so many occasions 
uh, right. which people have found. And, and again, you think about going into battle and it's it, it's like try diving off a three meter board and see how scared you are. And then imagine, you know, jumping out of a trench into machine gun fire or something like that. It is it is just astonishing that so many people found within themselves the resources that were necessary to do the thing that they knew they should do.